A petition circulating in Harvard University's student body seeks to ban Trump administration officials from teaching, speaking, or attending the institution because of their association with the president. The petition represents the latest attempt to punish Trump associates. Students are demanding that if the university does associate with the Trump alumni, they'll, quote, create and share with students transparent guidelines, unquote, for why. Harvard, like other colleges, has been accused of censoring conservative viewpoints. Shane, this is stupid. This is stupid on steroids. Um, if you're going to take that tact, Wilkerson, that used to work under the Bush administration, wouldn't be able to get a job. And fact of the matter is, Wilkerson is an amazing human being after that administration. Whatever you want to say is faults, whatever you want to say is flaws, however bad Bush was, yeah, Bush got a million people killed. But fact of the matter is, whether Bush got those people killed or not, you had a Democratic Party that was standing right there, arm in arm with them, while he was doing it, with a Joe Biden president, the person who's um, president-elect right now, being all on board, Bush doing so. So this notion that Donald Trump is somehow uniquely bad is nonsense. If you're going to hold that standard for Trump, that standard needs to be held for Obama, that standard needs to be held for Biden, that standard needs to be held for Hillary Clinton. All of these people have monstrous rivers of blood on their hands. Obama got 500,000 people killed in Syria. You think that they're going to do this nonsense with him? Think of all the wars that Joe Biden has been involved in. You think they're going to do this nonsense with him? They are not. They're not. Obama was putting kids in cages. They were separating families, maybe not to the degree as Trump. Maybe it wasn't as systemic. I guess my point is, if you're going to act like Donald Trump is somehow uniquely evil, some unique within our political space, I think you're a looting idiot. I think you're ridiculous on its face. It's an utter ludicrous premise. How are you going to make a distinction between Trump and Obama or Clinton? You could say he lies more, yes. But from the standpoint of those wars, that in and of itself should be enough. I mean, if you're going to take that argument, then none of these presidents and the people who are working with these presidents should be allowed to teach. What do you think, Shane? This is aggravating to me for some reason, because it feels like they're trying to make this distinction between Trump as if he's unique, you know, uniquely evil. And yet Obama was OK, despite getting 500,000 people killed and despite destroying Libya, where they're selling black slaves now as a result of Obama's actions or the starving, the death and the starvation in Yemen that Obama greenlit. Go read The New York Times. It's very clear that he greenlit that in order to get the JCPOA passed. I'm making the point that how are they making this distinction between Trump and the vile evil? of the previous administrations. All of these people should be dragged before the Hague. And I gotta be honest, if the United States wasn't in this kind of top dog hegemon, many of these people would have been dragged before the Hague. What do you think, Shane? <laughs> Maybe, I mean, here's the thing, man. I get where you're coming from. I don't like the I don't like the incredibly harsh language, mainly because I'm worried about the emotional atmosphere that it creates, you know, dragging people before the Hague, unless you're literally genociding, again, unless you're genociding uh, millions of people, even hundreds of thousands of people, definitely tens of thousands, possibly that, that that counts there. Unless it's like that level, trying to use the use the association, it blunts it blunts the actual meanings of the terms that you're using, which is ugly. No, and in Shane, the long run, it, it does it, not. It, you realize it undercuts you. that they would drag an African dictator to the Hague. They they prosecute African dictators left and right. Oh, this guy got a thousand people killed. This guy got this many people killed. They would do it in a heartbeat. George Bush gets a million people killed. And for some reason, he doesn't, I, I don't understand. The, I don't understand the perspective. Why is it okay for them to go after these podunk dictators in these countries? But when you get into these real people, like the people who are actually getting these large number of people killed based on the decisions that they're making in an office, somehow the Hague is hyperbolic. No, if it's good for that podunk dictator in Africa, it's good for George Bush. But I'm Him. not. I'm not saying it is. I'm. I'm not saying it is good for the podunk dictator in Africa. I don't think. Again, I don't think we should use it on either. That's the. That's the thing. I mean, coming back to the specific issue you were talking about with Harvard here, it's. It's ugly that I think that they're doing this. Um, I don't think it's. I don't, broadly, I don't think this stuff is good. It's like you're trying to sort of institutionally sanction members of your own country, and uh, can't. I, I. Here's the thing leads to more polarization, comes out of polarization. It's just increasing the swing of the pendulum and that, that's uh, you know making the system more volatile as time goes on. But what I wonder is, 
what what's the point? What where is this coming from? What is what is the, the sort of again? This is what I keep coming back to, and I, I still don't have an answer from it for it. What are the philosophical roots of why this kind of thing is considered legitimate to do by some people? I, I feel like if I mean, maybe this is again my own youthful naivete. If you can criticize those, if you can address those, if you can come up with some resolution of the tension underlying those beliefs, then you can you can lead lead the conversation. You can lead the whole mass of culture in a more peaceful and reconciliatory direction and in one that would be better for our society. Anyway, I, I'm probably going a bit far afield Shane, there, but that's, that's my tendency. Tomorrow, what's your take? I mean, there's the, this is not philosophical. I mean, this is, you know, it's, it's, <laughs> it's like no more philosophical than trying to checkmate a king. I mean, the objective is to attack and to keep attacking um, your opposition. Keep them off balance. You, every, you know, every, like the moves that are just Yeah, annoying. that's ugly. But, but you, no. I get what you're saying, but here's the thing: we all live in we all live in the same society. We talk we talk day after day after. I mean, not we do, but there's this idea of the opposition. If you're living in a country with the quote unquote opposition, at the end of the day, it's like you're living in a house with your enemy. Yes. And who wants that? That does, that, that 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 destroys you mentally, emotionally, and I'm and I'm talking about you in the wider sense. You as a as an American, me as an American, whatever. That destroys your culture. That destroys the like thing that's supposed to keep that organism together. So what? And I really want to. So what? What's up? So what? So what? Well, I guess, so, I mean, understand what I'm saying. I'm not saying that in a blunt way. I guess I'm making the point to you that that may be true, but that doesn't stop the actors in it. I mean, meaning my distinction or my separation is whatever I consider my separation to be. And if you have a group, hey, an hey, organization, can. they can separate themselves off and say it's us against them, despite the fact that everybody is on the same planet. Yeah, I think I think it can actually undercut them. If like if you like, here's the thing: moral arguments sometimes do actually work. If you have a conversation about morality with a politician in the eye of the public, and you do that consistently, if you try to bring wisdom back into the discourse consistently, that actually might be the kind of not leadership necessarily, but that might be the sort of substrate out of which leadership arises that leads to a genuine moral revolution. Which would be, I mean, a, a, frankly, a real revolution in some sense in our country. I think you need to consistently, consistently do that kind of thing. You know, of course, the trick there is it can't be hypocritical. It can't be two-faced, where you're saying it to one person and saying something to somebody else because that will destroy it. It needs to be genuine. But I think if you keep leveling that, uh, yeah, I think it might actually work. <laughs> anyway, uh, I, more I useful than I even take coming. If into we are, if I decide that we're in a competition. And you want to be kumbaya, you're going to lose. The reason you're going to lose is because my value set is antagonistic to yours. And you don't accept. And you're trying to do something that is impossible to do within the context of the game that I'm playing. This is the argument about competition. If I'm trying to checkmate your king and you're just trying to, you know, mess around, you're going to lose. It's, it's like, I, I understand what you're saying. You're looking for this kind of, um, how do we bring a certain degree of reconciliation? But I'm making the point that not everybody wants reconciliation. And in the same way that Obama's like, I'm going to reach across the aisle, well, you need somebody to reach across the aisle too. And if I'm going to put a knife in your hand when you reach it out to me, well, you're going to fail in your reach out. I mean, it's not, it's not as simple as, um, you know, let's just stay on a good path. I, it doesn't work that way. You have people who are competitors and who are very clear in what they want in their political objectives. And I understand what you mean by undercutting and the whole and everything else, but not everybody considers themselves part of that whole. Even though, yeah, all of us will perish because of it. But I feel you, man. 